Hello, this is Tom, and this is Dreamcast Magazine, issue 6, available on the 24th of February, 2000, for £2.99. Uh, the front cover has a nice spread of uh, V-Valley 2 and Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation, and a little hint here to, as to another feature in the magazine, which is a, a racing feature, that obviously about racing games. So let's move into the magazine itself. As ever, we have the uh, editorial from the editor, Simon Phillips, and the uh, contents page. Here we have a continued contents page with a nice picture there of uh, Raziel from the Soul Reaver game. Okay, this particular issue of the magazine does have some quite good features of uh, unreleased games. Um, this is a, is Picasso. This is a game that was coming from Promethean Designs. We have covered this on the Dreamcast Junkyard quite a few times and also spoken about it on the podcast. Um, but basically what this game was, was a cat burglar simulator where you would take on the, the role of this particular black clad figure here and then um, sneak into art galleries and museums and steal uh, works of art, paintings, that kind of thing. And uh, it did look quite like quite a promising game. Uh, there was no real footage of the game running, released, just these kind of like pre-renders and uh, some really quite bad uh, facial artwork sort of down here. Interestingly, if you do go on the Wayback Machine and look for the Promethean Designs website, uh, you can actually find uh, you know, the, the, the promotional artwork on that site. Uh, it's not the first time I mentioned Promethean Designs in this particular video. There's some more coming up in a bit. But yeah, this is a, like a nice little spread here that tells you about, about the game that we never saw. Moving on, uh, we have some news items here. Uh, we've got one here about uh, King of Fighters 95, sorry, King of Fighters 99 even, not coming to the uh, to European Dreamcasts. It's interesting that none of the King of Fighters games actually came out in, in PAL format to be honest um because they are you know quite highly uh, regarded on the uh, on the dreamcast you know it's certainly in the 2d fighting genre that we never got any of the snk uh, fighters really um here's a thing about obviously when this magazine came out lara croft was quite a big deal and um you know obviously she or the character is now as well with the new reboot of tomb raider but back then this was like the original run of tomb raider games and uh, Tomb Raider The Last Revelation, as detailed on the cover, was about to come out on the Dreamcast. So quite a lot of uh, Dreamcast-related Lara Croft tie-ins. Uh, but here about the, um, the the film The Spy Who Shagged Me with uh, you know, Austin Powers, uh, kind of promotion, promotional rubbish, really. Uh, more here about the um, game Nightmare Creatures 2, which is absolutely terrible. If you want to see how bad Dreamcast games can get, or rather PS1 ports to the Dreamcast, Check out Nightmare Creatures 2 because it is terrible. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> now, I don't know if you can see this very well on the video, but this is quite easily the worst Sonic the Hedgehog model I think I've ever seen. It looks nothing like Sonic. It, it's a bad approximation of what Sonic possibly looks like in 3D. I, I, horrendous. But this is just, um, as Dreamcast Magazine went on to do, head into an arcade and show some more arcade games but it's got nothing to do with the dreamcast it's just filler and over here we have a bit about sort of the berserk and another bit here about climax the design house uh, the developer making games for the dreamcast um yeah so uh quick look down here we've got the uh, the release schedules i'm just seeing if there's anything on here uh, arcaterra is on there for the pal uk release schedule that obviously never came out uh, pretty much everything else on there did actually make an appearance at some point. Furballs, its name was changed to Fur Fighters. Uh, yeah, there's nothing really on there that screams. Uh, let me see. No, no, pretty much. Oh, Dark Angel, that never came out, did it? Anyway, moving on. Get here about Quake the Arena coming to the Dreamcast. Obviously, at this point, it wasn't out yet, so this was just kind of like a, a forward looking feature. Um, some PC to Dreamcast conversions that they were looking forward to, Baldur's Gate and Evolver. Nice little advert down there for a PlayStation magazine. <laughs> I suppose at this point in the Dreamcast life, it wasn't you know, it wasn't a sinking ship yet, so it, they were quite happy to uh, obviously. Well, it doesn't really matter if 
it's coming from the same publishing house, so they put Play Magazine advert in there. Moving on, a little bit about Twinkle Star Sprites up there, that's quite interesting. Next, uh, this is Japanese and American news. And a uh, little piece here that's quite interesting about uh, Choo Choo Rocket being free to play on PC if you go to a certain URL. Uh, I like the way it gives the, um, the tech specs of your PC. You need at least 200 megahertz PC running Windows 95 or a 200 megahertz Power Macintosh. Uh, so that's sega.co.jp slash sega slash puzzle if you want to check that out on Wayback Machine. Uh, Probably won't work anymore, but it's worth having a look. Uh, a little bit about uh, some figures coming from Sega to mark the um, Sonic Adventure release. Uh, Mac and X. And then uh, Four Wheel Thunder down here. Okay, uh, if you do read the Dreamcast Junkyard, which if you're watching this on the actual Junkyard site, then I'm sure you do. If you go down a bit from this one, if you're on the main home page, you'll see a bit about Aqua GT, which was at one point Hydro Sprint and then was Hydro Sport Racing and this is the other game from Promethean Designs um, who were also behind Picasso. Um, obviously this one did actually come out but very in a very different way than what's detailed in these images and in this uh, little preview. Competition here, Deadly Skies and uh, the most wanted for this magazine in this particular issue is Resident Evil Code Veronica, Half-Life and Sega GT. Nice advert there for NFL Blitz. More news. Um, Grand Theft Auto 2 coming soon. And uh, a, a cheat that was discovered in Crazy Taxi where you could uh, ride one of these, um, what they're called, rickshaw bike things. I'm sure you've seen that by now. Okay, moving on. Um, preview of Echo the Dolphin. And also Rush 2049, one of my favourite games on the Dreamcast, incidentally. It's a great, great arcade racer. Love it. Uh, here we have update on Power Stone 2, the first screenshots. And uh, here's a, a nice feature where they show some... Uh, there are the, the covers that they never used on previous issues. So, um, yeah, they're quite, quite good. Issue 5, they were originally going to go with this Soul Reaver cover, but they ended up using the um, the one with all the women from Better Alive 2. Moving on to this page, quite interesting. Well, here's a little bit about Wacky Racers coming soon, which obviously happened. Now this one, Drones, or Drones, however you want to pronounce it, um, was a really early uh, game released for the... Um, sorry, details were released for the Dreamcast very early on. And it never actually came out. It did come out for PC as a like a tech demo for GeForce or NVIDIA graphics cards, and also for the Xbox, the original Xbox, um, as a Japanese exclusive. I've personally never played it. I don't own a Japanese Dream, uh, Japanese Xbox, so I can't play it. But um, yeah, if you've played it, then by all means, you know, let us know in the comments or anything what it's like. Um, and also Felony Pursuit, another one that we've featured a couple of times on the website and on this series of videos. Um, so yeah, that, that one actually did come out on the PC if I'm not mistaken. I might be mistaken. If I am, then please tell me. Preferably in all capitals in the uh, in the comment section. Oh, incidentally, somebody what, somebody called me a retard on one of my videos the other day because I... Yeah, that was it. The, the, the DreamCon video, if, if that's you, then uh, cheers for that. That was, that was really nice of you. Moving on, uh, Shenmue, another update, just uh, a bit of a blurb about, you know, more features being released about the game. And then some stuff here about LucasArts, about the games that they were going to be releasing for the Dreamcast. And so we've got some things here like uh, Force Commander and uh, Indiana Jones, Jedi Power Battles, which did come out, and Obi-Wan, which was a game for the Xbox. It was actually one of the first games I actually owned for the Xbox when I first got mine. The one with, um, yeah, with Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, it was all right, I suppose. Next, moving on, a preview here of Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation. I'm not a big fan of Tomb Raider, to be honest. So I thought The Last Revelation on the Dreamcast was just a really sloppy, like, port, really. Yeah, it's basically the same as a PlayStation game with a slightly tied up visuals. That's about it. I'm not really a big fan. So moving on, MDK two. This is one of the better uh, sort of 
third person action adventure games. It's really, really difficult uh, though, so bear that in mind if you do pick it up. Um, but yeah, it's really good fun, looks great, and uh, yeah, plays really well. So yeah, MDK2. That's that Soul Fighter advert again, made up of all different images from Soul Fighter screenshots, which is quite cool, really. Probably the best thing about that game. Now, here's a nice, interesting uh, preview of Half Life. And the reason I find it interesting is because this artwork, I'm not entirely sure if it's done by the art team from the magazine or what, but I've never seen this before. I've only ever seen it in this magazine. Certainly, this particular Gordon Freeman artwork here, I've never seen before. So that's quite interesting. Again, we've got this uh, image of a scientist here with a, with a face hugger or a head crab attached to his face, which I've never seen before. So that's quite good. And uh, yeah, lots of screenshots of the Dreamcast version of, uh, of Half-Life, which obviously didn't come out in an official capacity, but uh, has been leaked and can be played quite easily if you, uh, if you know where to go and get the... Uh, ROM or the ISO, whatever you want to call it. Next, uh, Daytona USA 2. Obviously, at this point, uh, Daytona USA 2001 hadn't been announced and wasn't really even in people's minds, but uh, people were, you know, looking forward to maybe seeing a Daytona USA 2 conversion for the Dreamcast, which, in my opinion, probably would have been a better thing than having Daytona 2001 because it just, I mean, I've never actually played it, so I'm probably just talking rubbish there but it looked like a better game anyway advert left crazy taxi 29.49 bargain now this is the thing i was talking about from the front cover this is a like a brief history of racing games or sega racing games so it's not particularly dreamcast orientated but it then goes on to detail some upcoming dreamcast racing games so we'll just quickly whiz through that you've got look, yeah, you've got outrun sega rally Ferrari and Virtual Racing. And then a little bit about some different, like unusual arcade cabs down here. You've got Final Furlong, Armadillo Racing, and Marble Madness, which isn't a racing game, but you know. So then we get on to the previews of some upcoming Dreamcast games and uh, V Rally 2, which is a pretty good PlayStation conversion. Uh, Sega GT and Stunt GP. Again, that's a PAL exclusive. And it's worth picking up if you combined it because it's really good. Ferrari F355, Metropolis Street Racer, and here we have Midnight GT, the game that is, uh, you know, one of the ones that I'm still trying to find more information on and see if it. I, I did come out on the PC, but it was only like a tech, uh, like a tech demo type thing, as far as I know. Um, Four Wheel Thunder, F1 Racing Championship. And then we're on to the review section. So let's crack on with these. So Reaver, again, one of the better PlayStation conversions for the, the Dreamcast. It's a really good adventure game, actually, and one that I would wholeheartedly recommend. Some great biblical names as well on the, uh, on the bosses. You know, things like Ezekiel and that kind of thing. If you are called Ezekiel and you're watching this then uh, I'm not trying to make out you've got like an old school name but it's quite cool <laughs> uh, so that got 90% Slave Zero the, my only issue with Slave Zero is the fact that it's got a really bad frame rate and the sense of scale is way off you're meant to be in this gigantic robot but all the buildings tower massively above you and it just looks really stupid if you were actually a person living in this world the buildings would be like four miles high I mean, you can see, well, you probably can't from this video, but anyway, I'm not a fan. Anyway, that got 70%. Moving on, NBA 2K. It's a great looking game. It's a great sounding game. I'm just not really much of a fan of NBA or basketball in general, to be honest. Uh, it's not that big a sport in the UK. Obviously, I know in America, people go mad for it all the time. But um, yeah, that got 89% because it is a quality game. You know, if you like that kind of sport. As far as American sports go, the, probably the only one I'm actually really interested in is ice hockey. And luckily, the, the ice hockey games on the Dreamcast, the, the NHL games are really good. So that's uh, cool. Deadly Skies, which is basically just Air Force Delta, but with a new name for the PAL uh, regions for some reason. 
There is a game on the Sega Saturn called Deadly Skies as well, which possibly led to some confusion. But um, yeah, that got 78%. It's one of the first games I played on the Dreamcast, actually, that the original um, Air Force Delta, anyway. Here's an import review of Biohazard Code Veronica, or Resident Evil, as we know it. And uh, yeah, really great, really, really great game. Even still now, you know, the graphics stand up fantastically well. And uh, yeah, that rightly got 93%. Some import reviews here. I'm sure you won't be able to see on the camera because it's quite quite small, but uh, we've got Space Channel 5, which weirdly is relegated to this really small slither here. You'd think it would have got its own review, or, or page review anyway. Um, so that's Space Channel 5 got 91%. Uh, Godzilla Generations Maximum Impact uh, got 40%. That's the second Godzilla game on the, um, on the uh, Dreamcast uh, because the other one is the one where you're just wandering around smashing the city up. I think this one is kind of like an into the screen kind of thing where you just point the, the target in rescue. I've, I've actually still not played it, but I, uh, I intend to get it. Um, Centipede got 38%. Uh, Elemental Gimmick Gear got 73 And uh, this one here, Kakayo. Uh, see, I should have I should have looked this up before I did the video, but it looks to me like that's actually... Um, oh, what's it called? Tech Romancer? Possibly. I might be wrong. Black got 82%. Moving on. Dreamcast Solutions, I uh, don't want to spend too long on these. Crazy Taxi Guide, why well, you need a guide to uh, Crazy Taxi, I'm not entirely sure, but they thought it was a good idea. Somebody must have gone through the game and written down every single customer and where they want to go. That must have been a very tedious job to do. And then a, a breakdown of the different Crazy Box modes. Big advert for Gameplay.com there. The more of these, uh, the new dream, the new website for Dreamcasters, dreamonbabe.com. Might be worth checking that out, see if it's still online, or at least going to the again the way back machine and seeing what what that's all about. I might actually do that in a bit because that looks uh, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Apologies if you did actually own dreamonbabe.com. Um, actually, no, I'm not sorry at all. Moving on, interact. I love these telegames, actually, these telegame adverts here, because you can see how cheap Atari Jaguars and Lynxes were back then. Here you go, you can get an Atari, Lan Link sorry, an Atari Jaguar and a CD unit uh, with five free games for £75. Oh, no, for £125, that's both for the console and the CD unit. I've got one over here, actually. This is one I made earlier. So you could have uh, you could have had one of them for one hundred twenty five pounds. It'll probably set you back triple that now. Anyway, moving on. Interact letters. Let's page. Uh, reader reviews. We've got uh, Soul Calibur ninety six percent. Virtual Fire three TB forty percent. Somebody didn't like that. F one World Grand Prix ninety one and the Fighting Force two twenty percent. Might be a bit harsh that it's not the best game ever on the Dreamcast, but it's. Uh, it's Quite playable, I would imagine. Well, I would say more about cars here. It's quite car heavy this issue, uh, and then some other websites there about Tomb Raider and HR Geiger and, uh, and Top Gun. Weirdly, okay, best Dreamcast cars. Kind of scraping the barrel a bit on the old features front, but uh, yeah, you got a Toyota Celica there at number one. Can't argue with that. You got Fat Slug from uh, Revolt at number two. Yeah, moving on, I think. And then we've got the directory, which is where they list all the different Dreamcast games and colour code them depending on what genre they are. I quite like the reviews at the side, like the DVD reviews and the music reviews because they're quite indicative of the of the era. So you've got like the X-Files movie down there, 4 out of 5. There is a new X-Files movie coming out actually quite soon, I believe. Um, here we've got what we've got, CD reviews, uh, Enigma, the screen behind the mirror, the Beach soundtrack with their uh, old... DiCaprio. It's quite interesting that he's still actually like a massive film star, even though he was making stuff like The Beach, which was massive back then. And now he's in The Revenant, which is, you know, getting a lot of uh, good reviews and stuff. Let's bend that down a bit. Right. This is quite cool because <laughs> this section is where they have gadgets and things from the era. So it's really, it's just interesting to look back at things that they thought were brilliant then. And, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes were, you know, We'll probably look back on iPod, iPads and stuff in, in other 10 years and think, oh my God, what crap was that? But um, 
Yeah, look at this MP3 player. It's £230. And, uh, yeah, it can hold 500 tracks. Yeah. Um, you've got Nautilus speakers. Look at that. It's hideous. It's meant to look like an inside of an ear. Um, and it costs £35,000. <laughs> uh, there's a TV here with quite a nice retro style. It looks a bit like a diver. Well, it doesn't look anything like a diver's, but it's got, got that same aesthetic. And, uh, yeah, nice Kenwood stereo there with a quite larger remote control. So moving on. Okay, next issue. Reviews of Rayman 2, Grand Theft Auto 2, Resident Evil Code Veronica, Sega GT, Tony Hawk, Skateboarding, and Star Wars Episode 1 Racer, and obviously Tomb Raider. Back issues, of which there were only five at this point. And then the dream moment, which is Speed Devils, um, where you drive through the, uh, the studio and you get things like jumping out at you and the King Kong thing smashing your car down if you drive underneath his fist. I've probably mentioned this before, but Speed Devils was the first game I actually owned for the Dreamcast, and I had it before the Dreamcast console as well. Um, but you don't want to hear about my boring life. So, yeah, that's the end of the magazine. On the back page, you've got this nice image of a character from Rayman 2. And, yeah, that is issue number six of Dreamcast magazine. Hope you, uh, you enjoyed this, and uh, thanks for watching.